story, uh, it's, it's apocryphal probably, which means that in, in uh, religious terms it's absolutely true. But, uh, <laughs> it's uh, when Napoleon was uh, forced the Pope to crown him, uh, the Pope uh, whispered in his ear, he said, you know, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to destroy the church. And I can tell you, we've been trying to do it for 2,000 years, and we failed at it. Um, I just want to thank, uh, again, I can't say enough about Pam and the Center for Constitutional Rights and what it means as a victim of these crimes as a child to have a voice, uh, a legal voice, and a human rights advocate to bring our story and our case uh, to the world. The last funeral I went to, and uh, I'm in Milwaukee, um, I know and work with hundreds and hundreds of victim survivors of clergy sexual abuse. There are almost 600 of us now have filed into federal bankruptcy court. Um, it has to be bankruptcy uh, where we have to now bring our case. Think about that. We're creditors. Um, I know well and had to deal for many years with the current Cardinal of New York, Timothy Dolan, who uh, brought uh, our church into bankruptcy, who paid off pedophile priests. The documents are coming out before he left Milwaukee. Gave them signing bonuses to quietly leave the priesthood. Gave them money to sign papers so they'd get out. Settled them into communities in Wisconsin and elsewhere. Uh, some of these uh, ex-priests have now are now still working with children and families. Um, the problem with this issue is how massive and large and systematic and global it is, and how long, how many centuries it's been going on. Just to give you quickly a sense of the dimension of it, so you understand it, in the United States alone, and this is by the bishop's own figures, there have been 6,100 priests. Now these are not allegations. These are confirmed by the bishops in their own investigations over the years. So 6,100 priests have raped or sexually assaulted children over the past several decades in the United States alone. Almost all of them were concealed and transferred into parishes and schools across the diocese they were in. Many of them were transferred across state and international boundaries. There has not been a single investigation by our Justice Department of this. Screaming headlines for years, not one investigation. Um, there has not been one hearing on Capitol Hill. Not one. Much less in the UN. 6,100. Now, if you look at uh, the rates of, of uh, sexual assault of children, the reporting rates, it's the most underreported crime in the United States and probably in the world. The reporting rate's about 6 or 7%. So that means every uh, child molester knows that he or she, because there's female uh, molesters as well, um, has a 1 in 20 chance of getting away with it. So what do you think they're going to do? And then you have a system which completely protects them and moves them around. If you extrapolate that number of 6,100, because the uh, Catholic population in the United States is like uh, under 10% of the world population of Catholics, uh, we're talking about, conservatively now, about 35,000 priests in the world right now that are child molesters. And that's the problem. And it's inside of a system that will does not have a rule now, this is an occupation, a profession. This is a credentialed occupation. These are all individuals with graduate degrees, okay, um, in which you can uh, rape and sexually assault a child. You have an occupation working with children and families, and you can rape and sexually assault a child and remain working in that occupation with children and families. That's why the priesthood, and of course most priests are not child molesters, but why the priesthood is, in my opinion, the most dangerous occupation for children in the world. And so we're about to, they're about to elect a new pope. And if he does not, on his first day, as the sun sets on that famous Roman sky, declare zero tolerance for child sexual abuse in the church, and that any priest that has sexually assaulted a child will be removed from the priesthood immediately, then we're going to go into yet another papacy where this is going to be hanging over the Catholic Church and over victims. Um, so, uh, obviously our case is uh, righteous, obviously it's global, 
uh, we have a system that just with the Catholic Church that doesn't just simply have child molesters in it. And I and I and I can argue with you, I think fairly persuasively, that it has a higher proportion of child molesters than other professions. And I can prove that to you statistically. Well, we have a um, um, a system that just doesn't have child molesters in its occupations of the priesthood, but actually produces them, manufactures them in a way within this system. And that's the much deeper problem. As I've said to, to, to bishops and cardinals when I meet them, I always ask one question. I'll say, okay, look, you can't be a woman and a priest. I'll buy that for the moment. I'll accept that for the second. You can't be a married man and a priest. Okay, I'll accept that for the moment. But you can be a child rapist and a child sex offender and a priest. And if you can answer to me that question, I am at the front, front pew second, next Sunday. But they can't. You have to, the ministry is an ethical and moral call, and it has a biological exclusion. That is essentially and constitutionally perverse. And until that is addressed in its rules and its, its way of, of, of thinking, this problem will never go away because they're manufacturing this problem and creating this problem. So I want to thank just all of you. I can't say enough about Pam. Um, if um, uh, the, the, I'll end with this. The Vatican yesterday, their spokesperson, and I can't tell you how delighted I am by this, how absolutely thrilled I am about this, said, uh, SNAP does not get to decide which cardinals come to Rome and get to elect the Pope. So we have them having to say... <laughs> Tell the world, hey, listen, SNAP there does not, oh, we get to decide who's going to be the Pope. SNAP's not going to have anything to do with this. But I can absolutely assure you that if and when we do, that uh, my candidate, our candidate, is right here. <laughs> <laughs> and as her first act as Pope is to eliminate the papacy. <laughs> because, you know, there's one thing, if you really want to get rid of sexual assault, you know, abuse of children in the priesthood, you could get rid of the priesthood, and that would solve the problem. So, <laughs> so again, thank you so much, and thank you for, for listening.